Hi, I'm Honest Matt, and uh, I lost John Tickles. Yeah, he's um, probably somewhere in this visit. I don't know where he is. But uh, in the words of Queen, the show must go on. So, let's see. What game should we play today? Uh, Link. Link, what game should we play today? Speak. Speak. Go. Go. Huh. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, good choice. You can always count on you. Don't judge me. I talk to inanimate objects. I said don't judge me. Let's talk about one of the two most requested games on this show. Legend of Ligaia. This is one of the most beloved cult classics in terms of PS1 RPGs, and today we're going to find out why. Released by Sony in 1988, the story of the game goes something like this. The game takes place in a world called Ligaia, populated by humans and objects called Siru, which can join with humans and grant them fantastic powers. While humans and Siru had once peacefully coexisted, about 10 years before the game begins, the world was covered in a mist which drove the Siru mad when it came in contact with them. Siru were transformed into monsters that attack humans, and human civilization nearly collapsed. At the time the game begins, human survivors have banded together in remote regions to hide from the mist. The game follows Van, the quiet hero, Noah, an excitable feral child, and Gala, a curt warrior monk on their quest to revive the ten Genesis trees throughout Ligaia in an attempt to vanquish the evil mist which covers the world. The three heroes joined with entities known as Ra Siru, which grants them powers like Siru, but they are immune from the effects of the mist. They travel across three continents, reviving Genesis trees that push back the mists over small areas, and destroying the mist generators that create it. Yeah, a mist that's full of terrible monsters. Kind of like the Stephen King novel. Let's see which one came first. The plot of the game is pretty solid, actually. I'm not exactly sure what the Siru are supposed to represent, but I think they're like a metaphor for technology, because they can both assist mankind, but also work against us. In any case, this doesn't really feel like a character-driven story, which is what I usually prefer, but I still like the main characters. The game's protagonist doesn't seem to talk a lot. He actually seems to do most of his problem-solving in a certain way. I'll let you guys try to figure out what that is. Anyway, the story doesn't get overly complicated, but the writing also doesn't feel that original. The game feels a little cliche at points, but I have seen worse for sure. In any case, it's an interesting story about survival, sacrifice, and a cautionary tale that managed to be pretty enjoyable. Let's get into the gameplay. This game is a pretty straightforward affair on the outside, with random battles, equipment, level ups, etc. However, the biggest deviation is the battle system. Ever play Xenogears? Remember the battle system there where you put in button combinations and kind of made these cool unique combos? It's a lot like that. Basically, you learn a ton of these combo moves through trial and error, and you can string them together to form attacks. Or, if you're just watching Desperate Housewives, you just keep hitting auto battle. Oh, I'm good at video games! You also have a lot of magic attacks, which is nice, but you get them pretty much at random by killing off enemies, which is kinda dumb. Other than that, it's a pretty fun, balanced battle system that manages to stay interesting, especially because there's just a lot of input from you. You don't just keep hitting attack and wait till the enemy disappears, you actually get to do a lot of interesting stuff, and I always appreciate that. However, I have to say that this is a pretty tough old school game. Even after grinding a lot, I still got my ass kicked by some bosses, which was kind of frustrating. Other than that kind of healthy challenge, it's a pretty fun, unique battle system, and probably my favorite and most memorable part of the game to me. 
there's actually not much more to say about the gameplay. You have a pretty huge world to explore, but it's all pretty basic stuff. It's a very simple game that's geared for more old school gamers, as there aren't that many bells and whistles. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but I was kind of hoping for a little bit more to differentiate it from the other games other than the battle system, but what you get is still really good. It's also a decently long game, taking about 30 to 50 hours to beat or so, but I don't quite remember the number. However, I swear a good chunk of this is just sorting through mazes, or even trying to navigate regular areas that are maze-like. Honestly, there are way too many mazes in this game, and it's not even like a good kind of maze where you can kind of figure it out, no 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 no, a lot of it really just looks the same. Bottom line, I hate mazes, mazes are the reason why there is evil in this world. The graphics in the game, I have to say, I really don't like at all. It may be actually my biggest negative point. Now listen, if you've been watching my stuff for a long time, you know that I usually never harp on graphics, cause I know they don't mean much. But this is not a visually appealing game. On the other hand, I found Final Fantasy VII visually appealing, but how does that make any sense in comparison to this? Well, the thing about Legend of Lagaya is that there's not too much color. Everything looks kind of bland, and the character designs are pretty unmemorable. I like this game and kind of how the style was and what they were going for, but uh, it was just kind of bland, and it felt like a chore to play because of that. I just didn't really want to spend time in this world, I didn't really have a drive to learn more. And really, that's kind of the most important part of an RPG. I know that you're living in a decaying world, that's kind of the point of the game, so everything should kind of be dark and bare, but it just felt kind of visually unengaging in my opinion. I don't want to pop in a video game and feel like I want to go coffin shopping, that's all I'm saying. The only highlight for me in terms of the graphics was when you were fighting, because those were actually pretty impressive and fun to watch, there's a lot of neat little animations. I know graphics can be subjective for sure, but I just did not like how this game looked. The music in the game was also rather unimpressive. It's fitting, don't get me wrong, but I honestly can't remember one song from playing this game, and considering how long it was, that's really really sad. I don't know what it is, it's not bad, it's just not memorable. However, the voice acting in the battle wasn't bad, even though it's all in Japanese and it's mostly just screaming, and it made the battles a lot more interesting and fun to me. In conclusion, I think that Legend of Lagaya is a pretty solid RPG, but I have to say that I'm a little disappointed by it. In all honesty, it was a good game, and I do see why people like it, but I don't see why a lot of people say that it's a super underrated classic for the system. The story and characters are good, the battle system is fun, unique, and kind of interesting, but the world and pretty much everything else feels kind of generic and not particularly memorable. Again, I can see why people like this game, and I do think it deserves some more recognition, but I don't think it particularly stands out to the other classic titles in the PS1 RPG library. Still, maybe it's because I've become too indifferent to the simplistic Dragon Quest-esque RPG that this game didn't do too much for me, but I know that fans of old school RPGs will definitely love this one. In any case, it's still a solid game for the system, and if it sounds interesting or appealing to you, definitely check it out. That's it for me guys, thanks for watching. Ah! <sighs>